everybody. Good to see you. Um, so it feels like I'm in church because nobody's in the front rows. So if you're in the back, you can come on down front. But I'm not a preacher, so maybe you won't listen to me. Anyway, um, my name's Sally McGee. I work for the Nature Conservancy. Um, I'm the uh, director of climate and strategic initiatives for our global aquaculture team. Um, and I'm going to talk today about two uh, aspects of our global aquaculture, aquaculture team's work. Um, the SOAR program, sustaining oyster aquaculture and restoration, that's the first one, and the Shellfish Growers Climate Coalition, which I've talked about here uh, in years past. Where do I aim this? Over here? All right. Okay, so I want to just kind of rewind as to why the Nature Conservancy cares about uh, aquaculture, why we're engaged in aquaculture. Um, and you can probably see even from the back, um, this is just trend over time of uh, growth of aquaculture, which is in the pinks, and uh, wild harvest fisheries, which is flat. So it's the fastest growing form of food production. So the Nature Conservancy is paying attention to it. Larger than wild harvest fisheries, larger than beef production. So we care. Um, and our vision is um, for aquaculture to be the world's leading regenerative food system. Um, so that's, the, that's our vision for our global aquaculture team um, and the work that we do worldwide and including in the US. So how do you achieve that vision? Um, just real quickly from a big picture, really kind of two angles we're taking um, uh, in terms of solutions toward, um, uh, toward aquaculture being um, on the forefront of uh, sustainable food. And that is looking at smart growth of fed aquaculture. So for us right now, that really means focusing on shrimp. Um, and for here today, what we're talking about is um, restorative aquaculture, so focusing on um, advancing development of shellfish and seaweed culture. So on the fed aquaculture side, mitigating risks. On the restorative aquaculture side, um, advancing development. Um, so we have five different uh, priority initiatives. I'm just gonna talk about two of them today. Um, so we have our SOAR program, uh, supporting oyster aquaculture and uh, restoration. We have a restorative seaweed initiative. Uh, we have a whole component that's dedicated to science and tools for management of aquaculture. Uh, we have a finance piece that's called the Blue Revolution Fund to encourage investment uh, in um, restorative aquaculture. And the last is uh, focus on climate change or the low carbon future. So the two I'm gonna talk about today are SOAR, I'm just gonna call it SOAR from now on, um, and uh, climate. Uh, so the SOAR program, um, it started uh, as a response to the pandemic um, with large scale uh, restaurant closures, um, completely shut down demand um, and then all of a sudden a huge surplus of oysters that were continuing to grow. Um, I remember at the time, I'm sure all of you do better than I do, but uh, hearing about farmers who were just uh, dumping their crops because they had no room for them they, as they continued to grow. Um, so what we did at the time, real quick, is um, raise a bunch of money to buy oysters from farmers and put them on restoration sites. Uh, so this was from 2020 to 2022, um, and it worked pretty well. Uh, we bought three and a half million oysters from 125 farmers um, and put those on 25 restoration sites um, to restore about 40 acres of uh, shellfish reef, oyster reef. Um, so I kind of think of that first round of the purchase program as being like a tourniquet kind of, um, to, to try to help the shellfish industry. Um, 
but we also had a restoration fund that was established also still during the pandemic. Um, we had a comp competition for 20,000, up to $20,000 $20, for farmers um, to support uh, more resilient, obviously, shellfish industry um, that would also advance conservation. So those grants were the intersection of aquaculture and restoration. Um, so this was the, um, we have two SOAR programs now. We had 1.0 that was from 2020 to 2022, and then we have the current SOAR program um, that began in 23. So SOAR 1.0, that first round, um, we, uh, we had about um, uh, almost 1.3 million in grants to 36 awardees on all three coasts. Uh, they were short projects, about 12 months. Um, and these are just a, a few of them. Um, we had uh, projects like the Shell to Shore in Georgia, which was a shell, new shell recycling program. Um, we had a program in, um, with Saranoa Shellfish in Florida, um, where they were taking materials that they couldn't sell, but maybe could be used as substrate for restoration. <clears throat> this program was nationwide. Uh, we had one project um, in Alaska that was designed for Alaska, um, uh, Alaska Native tribes to develop um, their own uh, hatcheries, uh, which is really important um, in Alaska when uh, communities are very remote. They need to do that themselves. And then another example was one in uh, Indian River, um, in, also in Florida, doing a co-culture experiment with um, urchins and oysters. So those are the kinds of projects that, um, that were funded. So that first round, the purchase program, plus the resiliency fund, we got really good feedback from people. People liked it a lot. Um, it was successful in terms of the ecological outcomes um, as well. Uh, so we went out and raised, raised some more money. Um, we uh, have been funded through the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation and um, a private uh, foundation called the Builders Initiative um, to about $6.3 million uh, for this second uh, SOAR uh, program. We have the purchase program again, it's in eight states, the Resiliency Fund nationwide. Uh, we have a, a DEIJ initiative that's also nationwide. And then, really importantly, we have, um, uh, we're looking at how we can make this thing sustain beyond the Nature Conservancy raising money and having um, more demand than what we're able to meet. So long-term viability is what we're looking at, too. Um, so the purchase program, the bottom row, the dark blue, is what we're aiming for right now in our second uh, round of uh, the purchase program. Um, so you can just see how the numbers add up. Um, the first row is, is from 2020 to 2022. The bottom row is uh, what we're aiming for now in the purchase program that's currently underway. Um, so those are the numbers that we're, that we're aiming for, about um, six million oysters purchased total. Um, so go ahead and, and you can um, pull out your phones. Um, I've got some questions about um, the uh, SOAR 2.0 Resiliency Fund. Um, so this was, again, small awards, about $20,000, up to $20,000 for uh, individuals who were um, mostly from farms, working on restoration, farm efficiency, and um, DEIJ. So um, with also an, an the importance of uh, leverage, leverageability. So if uh, people are able to, need to be able to demonstrate that they can leverage out the work that they're doing, so it's not gonna just benefit their farm, but it's gonna benefit other farms too. So we got 153 proposals, so popular again. Uh, we were only able to fund uh, 47, and um, if you uh, captured that QR code, you can see the list of all the uh, projects um, that received awards. Um, so long term, we're looking at USDA through uh, the Natural Resource Conservation Service. NOAA, we just put in a grant application for their Climate Ready Workforce to help, uh, hopefully, if it's funded, we'll find out, I think, in August, um, to um, continue training for farmers to be able to incorporate restoration into their business plan. 
Um, we're making pitches in all different places through the Farm Bill. It's, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere or not. It, it is, it's not, it is not, so we'll see. States, conservation districts as well. Um, quickly, also wanted to let you know what the latest is with the Shellfish Growers Climate Coalition. Um, so, this, so that was SOAR, now we're talking about climate. Um, so founded in 2018 by seven shellfish farmers who came to TNC and said we're having these problems. Uh, help us figure out what to do about uh, climate impacts. We've got about 300 members right now um, in all states that uh, where shellfish are grown, including a lot of you. So thank you for being members. Um, our goal, low carbon future, where we can all get along. <laughs> Um, and we were established for all the sad reasons that we've been talking about, ocean acidification, higher water and air temperatures, storms, sea level rise, dead zones, algae blooms, all the sad things. <clears throat> and the well-being of farms affects marine ecosystems, communities, and food systems. Um, so we've achieved a lot in terms of, in the first four years of the coalition, in terms of uh, federal policy advocacy. Um, we've shared stories with literally hundreds of thousands of people um, about the effects of climate change on shellfish um, through different storytelling projects and social media. Uh, lobbied hard for um, a lot of money that has been directed toward uh, climate um, successfully. So we've kind of shifted gears um, since the opportunity um, for federal policy we've, has been accomplished to some degree. Um, we've really shifted gears based on feedback that we've gotten from um, our from coalition members who say, who've said, we surveyed them over the course of about nine months, um, that they want to take personal action and that they want to continue to share their experiences in specific ways. So in terms of personal action, um, data collection on farms, not surprising that we've heard a lot of that uh, here today. Um, uh, but also there's an interest in uh, developing a carbon footprint calculator for farms so they can understand what their, their uh, carbon footprint is. In terms of sharing experience, um, there's interest in, um, you know, farmers want to get there and get out and share and encourage farmers in other countries outside the U.S. Um, and they want to share uh, within their own communities, um, in particular with young people. So we don't have enough money to do all of this. So we're doing two of these things. Um, we're doing the carbon footprint calculator and we're doing the outreach to youth. So with the carbon footprint calculator, it's in the early stages of development right now. Um, if you go to fishscores.com, you can see it's not a prototype of what we're doing, but it's kind of the, the starting point for the type of carbon footprint calculator that's being developed. Um, Ultimately, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll have it done by maybe the fall, um, but um, the idea is for farmers to be able to plug in some numbers that you have easy access to, to figure out where you might have areas that you want to improve in terms of your carbon footprint, um, and then, um, then the next step will be to identify ways to uh, reduce emissions on farms. So the variables that we're looking at right now are not surprising, species, farm location size, hatchery, whether you have one or you're being supplied by one, farming methods, storage method, uh, your ener farm energy short source, and uh, shipping and distance. If you have ideas for other things that you think really should be included in the calculator, we're in really early stages, so um, I'd be happy if you would let me know um, what your thoughts are. Um, and then the last piece is working with youth. Um, we have a, a new partnership that um, has not been announced yet, and I'm not announcing it here today, so <laughs> anyway, I want to just tell you about it anyway. Um, so the Climate Initiative is a project, it's a nation, nationwide uh, nonprofit that works with science teachers to help them incorporate climate into their curriculum. Um, so there are thousands of high school teachers that use the resources that the Climate, that the climate Initiative has. We're planning to roll it out, the, roll it out this spring. It's gonna be something that's free that everybody, anybody can participate in once or many times. Have students come to your farm, go to a high school, um, but we already have um, some connections that are being made um, in Maine um, just because there was a teacher who was super excited and wanted to get going, so we said okay. 
Um, so uh, look for that, the partnership with the uh, Climate Initiative um, coming soon this spring. Um, so that's it. If you want to join the Shellfish Growers Climate Coalition, uh, just go to nature.org slash shellfish for climate. It's free to join. It costs you nothing. And you don't have to do anything. You can do as much or as little as you want um, as a member. Um, and if you want to test the carbon footprint calculator when we have a beta, just email me. Thanks.